Hi everyone, Lisa Callagy here to share with you a video on how to create and assign an assignment to your students in Study Island. So in this video, I'm going to show you the steps on how to assign an assignment, but I'm also going to show you how to choose the assignment and um, preview the portions of the assignment and decide whether or not you'd like to assign all the resources that Study Island has as part of an assignment for your students. All right, so let's get started. I'm right now logged into Study Island as a teacher. And to get to the page where you wanna assign an assignment, come on over to the left-hand side menu bar and choose Class Manager. So now you're going to see a list of your classes. You can choose one class, but realize that you still have the option to assign your assignment to multiple classes. So to start out, just choose one class and then click on that class title. And then I'll show you how to assign your assignment to multiple classes at the end or towards the end of the video. All right, so on this page here, we're on the class page and assignments page in your class manager. You have two areas here where you're able to add assignments. You can see that green add assignments button. There are two of them. The first one is for you to create an assignment and add it to your entire class. So when I create an assignment after clicking on this first button, it will go to all the students in my class that I'm on right now, plus any subsequent classes I choose to assign it to every single student. The one below is adding assignment and I get to pick specific students that I would like to assign the assignment to. Okay, so one is for a whole class and one is for individual students. All right, so I'm going to choose the class assignments. Just realize that both of these assignment, adding assignment, the process and procedures are the same. So depending on which one you choose, it just has to do with who will be receiving that assignment, your whole class or individual students. Clicking on the add assignment button brings you to the choose assignment type page. And you have four different choices here of assignment types, practice and instruction, group session, test builder, and writing assignment. For this video, we're going to be assigning a practice and instruction assignment. And there are other videos um, in the Study Island playlist to show you how to assign a group session, running group sessions, um, and assigning test builders, building tests, and there will be a video on how to create a writing assignment. All right, so for this video, we're doing the practice and instruction assignment. Click on create assignment. Okay, so now in the create practice and instruction assignment, we have three tabs that we need to work through before we assign the assignment. The first tab, general info and preferences. Our first task here is to name the assignment. Right now, I'm going to leave that blank because you'll see I like to choose or copy and paste the topic name from our assignment options tab into the assignment title. So that way, when I'm looking at my results, I know exactly what topic this assignment was um, for my students. So I'm going to skip that. Next, we have enforced dates. So here's where you're able to choose the date and time that the assignment will be available for your students to work on and the date and time that it will be due. So after the date and time, it won't be available for your students before date and time it will not be available for your students. So you get to choose the date and the time. If you want those dates to be, those dates and times to be enforced, you have to turn this slider to the on position. Below that, you'll see an activate assignment. This is, make, this makes the assignment active to the students, regardless of whether or not you have a date and time assigned. So if you do not have a date and time assigned, you still have the option of inactivating the assignment. Why would somebody want to do this? Well, if you like to plan ahead and you want to prepare 
and create your assignments for say a marking period and have them in your classroom um, manager assignment list, but you don't want students to have access to them. You can have create your assignments, but not have them activated. And then later on, you can activate your assignment. And I'll show you how to do that when we're finished here. I'll show you where you click to activate your assignment in your class manager. I'm gonna make this assignment active. I'm not going to enforce my dates. Notice these question marks next to both of those sliders. If you click on that, it gives you a little um, brief explanation of the two sliders and how they work within this general information and preferences section of the assignment builder. All right, so next we have instructions. You could type up to 300 characters, giving students some guidance, specific guidance if you'd like for uh, the assignment that you choose. Under additional preferences, you have uh, calculator choices here, either do not give students access to a calculator or give them access to either a standard or a scientific calculator. And lastly, there are uh, school preferences that you're able to override, meaning that the school admin, study island admin, has preferences that are available or that are given to the entire school that they set up under the admin account. So you see those preferences here. They're grayed out. Allowing game mode, hiding the timer, scratch pad, and so forth. Some of these are on the yes, some of these are on the no, um, and that's what it is for everybody. You have the ability to turn this slider to the yes position and change any of these school preferences for this one assessment. Okay. Once you've completed all this information here, you click on next assignment options. So here's where you're going to select your topic and any resources that go along with the topic. So let's start by clicking our program, which is our grade level, and realize there are a lot besides just the grade level um, standards, New Jersey standards. You have U.S. programs here to choose from. Once you select your program, then you could select your subject area. Once you select your subject area, now Study Island is loading all the topics related to the subject area for that grade level. All right, so now we need to go through your selection choices. So the first thing you'll notice is a slider that says enforce resource order. What are the resources? Well, for each topic assessment or assignment that you give, there are possible lessons connected to it, flashcards, and then the practice session that is standard. So you get to choose the order that you would like your students to uh, face these resources. So if you want them to see the flashcards first, then the lesson, then the practice section, you would switch this, uh, switch to yes, take the flashcard, move that over. So now the students will see the flashcards first, then they'll see the lesson and then they get the practice session. Okay. Next, you'll see a topic standard map link. So I'm going to click on that just so that you can see what that is. Basically takes the standards for the topic in the grade level and gives you the study island topic that has that standard within it. So questions from drawing inferences and textual evidence topics in study island, they target this RL 4.1 key idea and detail standard. Okay, so if you're looking for a specific standard that you would like your students to practice in, these are the study island topics where they would be able to practice 
that standard. Okay, you can print that out as well. Going back to our assignment options. Now you could see to the right of the, the topic column, you have five other columns, a constructed response column with the question mark that gives you some more information about what the constructed response is, the number of questions per session, passing percentage per session, the assignment of lessons, and the assignment of flashcards. And you'll see below those columns, you have all the information. And to the left of those um, choices, you have the topic. So you see that this is grayed out and that's grayed out because I haven't selected a topic. So if I wanted to select a topic, I'm gonna to click on the checkbox to the left of the topic title and notice all of the resources here become available for me. So for setting, I want to uh, choose whether or not I wanna include a constructed response. If I don't, I keep it at no. If I do, I slide it to yes. If I wanna see what the constructed response questions look like, I could click on this magnifying glass and now I get an actual view of what the constructed response questions look like for students, okay? Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to get both of these. It might be one or the other. And this is just for setting. Other topics have constructed response questions and they might have more than two. You can also print out the constructed response question or open it up in Microsoft Word where you're able to edit it and then print it out or share it with your students. Next, you can change the amount of questions for your topic, either 30 at the maximum and five, I believe, is the minimum. Then you could choose to change the passing uh, percentage for your assessment, and that is either it's default at 70, you can raise it or lower it. Next, you have lessons, so you can choose whether or not you want to assign the lesson for this topic to your students in their assignment, sliding it over to yes, and then clicking on the magnifying glass, which will give you some more information about what this lesson looks like for that particular topic. And then if you would like to assign the flashcards for your students for that particular topic sliding it to yes. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to copy the title of this topic and go back. If you remember, I like to choose the exact topic title as my assignment title. So I get to see um, what my students, what this test was uh, assessing for my students. And please be aware that you're also able to choose multiple topics. So I just chose one but I could choose multiple topics for this one assignment. And I still have the availability to uh, utilize all these resources. Once I've selected my topic or topics and my choices of resources, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and click on next, students. So here's where you're going to assign the assignment to your student, to your classes. Remember we selected 302 as the initial class. That's why this is checked off here, but I did tell you that we're able to select other classes and this is where you would do it. So if you want to select other classes to have this assignment, simply put the check mark, um, check the box to the left of the class name and that those students in that class will also receive the assignment. Once you're finished, you click on save and exit. Now you're back on your class page in assignments and you'll see the assignment that you have assigned to your class. I did tell you that you are able to have your assignment activated or deactivated. Right now, this assignment is activated. 
If I wanted to deactivate it, I just click on this first icon under the actions column to deactivate it. I'm going to click on yes. And now you'll see it's grayed out. This is a great way for people who like to plan ahead and get everything ready for your students, but you don't want your students to be actively engaged until you're ready for it. So you can build out as many assessments as you'd like or assignments as you'd like, as you'd like but just keep them inactive. Your students won't see them. When you're ready to activate them, just come into your class assignments page, click on the first icon under the actions column, activate your assignment, Okay, you're able to um, edit any of the information here if you'd like. Okay. Click on save and exit. And now your assignment is active. Your students can go in and take the assignment. So I'm going to now end this video, but I'm going to cr create another video where I'm logging in as a student so that you can see what a student sees from their perspective taking this um, assessment assignment here setting. All right. I hope this helps you guys. Have a great day.